On June 26, the Sisters of St. Joseph of the Diocese of Springfield lost a longtime member of their community. Sister Betty Gould died following a brief battle with cancer. A native of North Adams, Sister Betty served as superintendent of diocesan schools from 1984 to 2005, and as a teacher and principal in many schools before that. Sister Betty was 75 years old and in her 57th year of religious life. Hello, I'm Sharon Rulier. Happy 4th of July weekend from Forest Park in Springfield and welcome to our first summer edition of the Best of Real to Real. This summer we will bring you some of our favorite programs that aired during this past year. Today's program was hosted by L. Platinitis, a fourth grader from Mater De La Rosa School in Holyoke, who won the chance to guest host in a silent auction at her school. I hope you enjoy this show that first aired on May 10th. Coming up on this edition of Real to Real. I'm Terry Hegarty. I'll be reporting on a national study regarding the impact that Latino Catholics are having on the U.S. Catholic Church. I'm Carol Lee McGrath. I'll have the reaction of local Catholics to two Supreme Court decisions protecting religious liberty. And how one busy mom balances it all, keeping her faith in focus. These stories and more are just ahead on this edition of Real to Real. From throughout Western New England and beyond, this is Real to Real, your window on the world around you. Hello, and welcome to Real to Real. I'm Al Platinitis, a student at Mata De La Rosa School in Hollywood, and I will be your guest host for today. And we begin our program today with a focus on two new studies published this week on Hispanic Catholics in the U.S. Church and the shifting religious identity of Latinos. Terry Hegarty has our story on how the Catholic Church is moving to meet the needs of this growing U.S. population. Earlier this week, Boston College released a comprehensive national study indicating that the U.S. Catholic Church must adapt to meet the needs of Hispanic Catholics who are continuing to arrive here. Also this past week, the Pew Research Center released results of its 2013 National Survey of Latinos and Religion. The Boston College study contends that the explosive growth of Hispanic Catholics threatens to overwhelm the American Catholic Church, but the word overwhelm carries a rather negative connotation, and the influx of such devoted, devout Catholics is a great benefit to the Diocese of Springfield, according to many. It's a blessing, but at the same time, it's a challenge. And we can see, we, we do see nowadays the, need of, uh, the needs of each parish to, to offer the, uh, 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 Spanish uh, uh, masses and uh, uh, re religious education programs uh, and, and, and try to nourish uh, our brothers and sisters as, as one Catholic church. Offering adequate resources to the growing population could be seen as an overwhelming task, but in the Diocese of Springfield, Andres's office began implementing a Hispanic pastoral plan several years ago. This has helped them to prepare for today's growth. And six years ago, seminarians in the diocese began to be specifically prepared for Latino ministry. Bishop McDonald, first of all, wants seminarians to have a sensitivity of the various worship experiences, the various cultures that come together that make up the Diocese of Springfield. The men go to a parish in Holyoke to learn about the cultures firsthand and then branch out to all areas of the diocese. And then for a period of four to six weeks, we send them to the Mexican-American Catholic College in San Antonio, Texas, where they get a total immersion uh, in Spanish and hopefully will uh, be able to test their skills. Having an immigrant group assimilate into a parish is not just beneficial to the new arrivals, but is beneficial to the entire faith community. 
So this has been very helpful yeah. because I think we've increased the number of priests who are able to minister to the Latino population in the diocese uh, tremendously. One key in dealing with such a large influx of Hispanic Catholics in the Diocese of Springfield exists right here at Our Lady of the Elms College in Chicopee. Education and formation in the faith enrich participants greatly. And now you have a large uh, educated population of Spanish-speaking people who are very devoted to the church and devoted to a more uh, traditional uh, Central American uh, approach to living your living your faith and so there's been a growing need for some kind of theological education for the leaders of the Spanish community. Meeting that need is the Institute for Theology and Pastoral Studies at the college. Certificate programs are taught in Spanish and in English. Dr. Peon serves as the director of the Institute. He says that the resources offered through the Elms has allowed the Catholic Church in Western Massachusetts to be in better shape when it comes to serving Hispanic Catholics than many other dioceses in the country. But the sheer number of Hispanics seeking resources is still daunting. The numbers of people who came from Ireland or, or who came from Canada or who came from, uh, from, from France or Poland uh, is small in comparison to this, uh, th this current experience of uh, immig uh, immigration and migration because it's not just an immigration, it's, it's, it's also uh, the moving of populations within the country uh, is going to uh, give us challenges that are well beyond what we were dealing with 100 years ago. Andres says that his office strives to assist both the Latino and Anglo communities. We have the resources to help them out uh, in whatever uh, education in Spanish or bilingual and masses could be in Spanish pref preferably but it could be bilingual and, uh, 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 and some sort of social activities. The Pew survey found that while a majority of Hispanics in the U.S. still belong to the Catholic Church, more and more are going to Protestant denominations or are ceasing to practice any religion. Affirming this, the Boston College study contends that the secularization of Hispanics is the biggest threat to the future of the Catholic Church in America. Andres says that future success largely depends on praying for more Latino vocations to promote vocations. So we could get uh, a better, uh, in the future, let's say maybe 10 years from now, we could get more uh, um, uh, Latino uh, guys to be involved in the, in the priesthood. And, and also the woman, the woman religion is also very, very important. With prayers for vocations, learning more about the faith and the Latino culture, the faithful from all ethnicities are better able to enjoy a more enriching and rewarding experience as members of the Catholic Church. Reporting for Real to Real, this is Terry Hegarty. And learning more about the Latino culture is the focus of our next story. Recently, during spring break, some cathedral high school students took part in a tour of Costa Rica. Teacher Lynn Callahan and her students hiked, danced, cooked, and explored their way through the Central American country on a learning trip of a lifetime. Sharon Rulier has our story. Cathedral High School Spanish teacher Senora Callahan has built a tradition at the school of traveling abroad during spring vacations. For the last five years, she's taken groups of students to Italy, France, Spain, Ireland, and this year, Costa Rica. The whole point of the Costa Rican tour was cultural. We wanted to give the kids a really good sense of what it's like to be in a developing country such as Costa Rica. For many of the students who went on the trip, this was their first experience in a developing country. Well, I've been to the Bahamas, but it was on a, it was on a cruise. It's not really the same. <laughs> not the same at all. 
The students immersed themselves in the culture of the country as they ate rice and beans for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, hiked through the rainforest and ziplined over the treetops, not to mention their up close and personal encounter with bugs. Before we got in bed, we would like lift our sheets up and make sure there's nothing <laughs> in them. <laughs> we put lots of bug spray on, and there were, <laughs> I don't know if we should talk about that. <laughs> scorpions in one of our rooms. <laughs> but we got them out. <laughs> it was fine. <laughs> we're back alive. <laughs> and capuchin monkeys in the trees at the beach. At an elementary school in San Carlos, they learned to dance. And they also played soccer with the students. Watch the ball. If you watch the ball, you're fine. We learned so much on that trip just with like experiencing things and our tour guide Mine are also telling us stuff, like we learned an interesting fact about Costa Rica, how 98% of their energy is clean energy, which is a, like just really astonishing on how much clean energy they have, and it's kind of an example for our country to look at. From a teacher's perspective, you can teach them something all year long, but when they get the chance to actually experience it, it is so much better. They're fully immersed in the culture, in their traditions. The group was in Costa Rica during Easter week, and they were able to experience and see how the people of this Central American country live out their faith. We went to an all-metal church, and so the whole church was made from metal, the whole outside and inside, and they had a lightning rod post, so in case during a lightning storm they were there, it would hit the rod and go underground because of the church was all metal. Senora Callahan said the students witnessed the solemn nature of Good Friday as an entire town shut down to come together for the way of the cross. To see that procession and how involved and believing these people were, it was just, for me, it was wonderful. And even for our students to know that this is our faith and this is how it's lived out in other countries. It looks like the students really learned a lot on their trip, and they will remember for the rest of their lives. It's still to come on Read or Real. Carolee McGrath with the latest on the Supreme Court Hobby Lobby ruling. And Mark Giza reviews some summer movies. These stories and more are still to come on this edition of Real to Real. The Chalice of Salvation, your weekly spiritual connection. I'm Passionist Brother Terrence Scanlon, your Chalice host, inviting you to take time out of your hectic summer days and join us on Sunday morning. This week, we welcome Father William Wallace and remember the late Bishop John A. Marshall on his 20th anniversary of his death. The Chalice of Salvation, your spiritual connection, Sunday morning at 10, right here on 22 News. He is a doctor of the church, a messenger of hope, and the finder of lost things. He is Saint Anthony of Padua, and one of his first-class relics will soon be on display right here in Western Massachusetts. Come to Saint Anthony Maronite Catholic Church, 375 Island Pond Road in Springfield from September 6th through the 14th to see the relic. There will be daily masses and opportunities for confession. 
There will also be food and a religious gift shop at the adjacent Cedars Hall. Special days have been scheduled for different heritages and cultures. There's even a special youth day. Father Warren Savage will offer a three-part evening lecture series about St. Anthony of Padua, who is a beloved Franciscan saint known as a gifted preacher. Don't miss this rare opportunity to see this relic, which will travel all the way from Italy. For more information, call 413-452-0577 or log on to stanthonysrelic.com. This 4th of July weekend, local Catholics celebrate two U.S. Supreme Court decisions that protect freedom of speech and religious liberty. The first victory came last Friday when the U.S. Supreme Court, in a unanimous decision, struck down what was known as the buffer zone, a 35-foot semicircle painted around the entrance to the parking lot outside abortion clinics like Planned Parenthood in Springfield. The Massachusetts legislature passed the buffer zone law in 2007 to prevent demonstrations or protests in front of abortion clinics, but employees of the abortion clinic were exempt from the law and were able to freely pass through the buffer zone. Tim Biggins is the chair of the pro-life commission for the Diocese of Springfield. Yeah. The buffer zone, also great development from the court affirming our free speech rights in a unanimous decision, no, no ambigu ambiguity about that. You know, that we have the right to have that free speech and access to the public way outside an abortion clinic. So that's good. And that, that's good. And we understand that, the, you know, the reaction in Massachusetts was due to past violence that none of us wants to see. So it's not a good thing. Uh, you know, when you're pro-life, you want to be peaceful all the time, peaceful and prayerful. And I think that that's been demonstrated in the 20 years that there's been a buffer zone law thereabouts. And uh, so I don't think there's any risk to anybody. Then, last Monday, another victory for religious liberty. In a 5-4 decision, the court ruled in favor of Hobby Lobby, the Oklahoma-based arts and crafts chain which objected to the Obamacare mandate requiring them to pay for contraception for their employees. The decision applied to closely held for-profit companies. Hobby Lobby, which has a store at the Holyoke Mall, is owned by a Christian family. Attorney Jack Egan of the Springfield firm Egan, Flanagan & Cohen represents the Diocese of Springfield. He says he's not surprised with the court's ruling in the Hobby Lobby case. I think it's an important case for First Amendment rights. Uh, I think it's not uh, particularly groundbreaking. I think it was foreshadowed by the Citizens United case in which the court said, same split, five to four, that private corporations have First Amendment rights with regard to political speech and political contributions. Well, if you got First Amendment rights with regard to certain aspects of the First Amendment, it seems to me easily, it easily follows that you have those rights with regard to the religious aspects of the First Amendment. Because of the unique corporation soul structure of the Springfield Diocese, it would be exempt from the HHS mandate. That's not the case for all dioceses across the country. Several have filed lawsuits challenging the contraceptive mandate, including the Archdiocese of New York, Washington, D.C., and St. Louis, to name a few. Attorney Andrea Bernalt McGinnis is a former member of the Pro-Life Commission. She practices family law in Holyoke. She says she never bought the Obamacare argument that contraceptives were a necessary part of a woman's health care. In the Catholic Church, of course, we take a stand against contraception. Uh, contraception, some will say, is uh, part of preventative health care. And we say, well, contraception is actually used to prevent pregnancy. And we don't feel that pregnancy is a disease or an illness that needs to be prevented. Uh, that's a natural part of the process of life. And we're not looking to include it as health care. With regards to the HHS mandate, there are still several high profile cases to watch, including lawsuits filed by EWTN and Priests for Life. Reporting for Real to Real, I'm Carolee McGrath. Clive Owen and Julie Binoche give us a beautiful romantic comedy. Director Clint Eastwood gives us a lukewarm Jersey Boys. And Transformers are back just what we need this summer. Let's take a look at the top films playing right now. Ladies and gentlemen, the Four Seasons! Okay, first things first. The Broadway show is much better. 
The stage show has the music, the drama, and a powerful story, which is something that happens in this film, but later on. Unless you've been living under a rock, Jersey Boys tells the story of Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons, their ride from singing on a street corner to the bright lights of Vegas. I saw the Broadway musical and loved every bit of it. Now, five-time Oscar winner Clint Eastwood directs the film version. And with all of Clint's work, they tend to be long. And this film is no exception. It might not have the sizzle it needs to be a hit because the first hour is so boring. I kept looking at my watch. But once it gets started, it does work. If you are a fan of the original musical, you may overlook the long beginning. But the ending of the musical will have you dancing out of the movie house. It's too bad the first hour is so long. It's time, friends, for a big summer film. Now, these films are not necessarily Oscar winners, but they will sell popcorn and bring in large crowds. And this film is a perfect slice of the pie. The story is simple. A dad, Mark Wahlberg, tries to protect his daughter from these over-the-top monsters. Okay, let's be fair. People eat this stuff up. But at my age, I sit there saying why. Yes, bad guys are there trying to find out secrets. The secret that could be that large metal truck that our hero discovers. My real question is, why would an actor like Stanley Tucci be a part of this film? The answer simply is money. The film will be a big summer hit. It's loud, stupid, and shows a dad and his daughter fighting the bad guys. For me, give me a love story anytime. Yes, I'm showing my age. Speaking of which, the new film Words and Pictures has it all. Most of all, it's a love story between an English teacher played by the perfect Clive Owen and an art teacher played by Oscar winner Juliette Binoche. The story follows their simple but sweet love story and how great it is to have someone to be in your corner. Owen has never been better and takes his role of Jack to a new level. We believe in him and we want him to succeed. Binoche who in my mind is just a great actress, makes her role sweet but tough at the same time. If you need a date film or just a film to see with great actors at work, this is your film. I just loved it. Dar Santo, I am gonna walk over there where the light is falling on you and I am gonna kiss you, unless you speak a loud resounding no. And you can see my reviews, as well as read other movie reviews, provided by the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops, online at iobserve.org. That's iobserve.org. And if you're looking for some terrific theater this summer, why not check out the Berkshire Theater Festival? They're starting with the great play, The Mystery of Irma Vep, followed by James Naughton in a one-man show. Tony Award winner Cheetah Rivera, shows up at the Williamstown Theatre Festival for the musical The Visit. And also locally, you can't beat the New Century Theatre with their great comedy, Laughter, on the 23rd floor. All this great theatre waiting for you. For Real Culture, I'm Mark Giza. Enjoy this terrific weekend. From blogging, to reviewing, to sewing, to homeschooling, Patrice Fagnant MacArthur is a busy mom. However, at the core of all her activities is her faith. For this Mother's Day weekend, Real to Reel's Peggy Weber visited Patrice in her Springfield home and tells us more about this remarkable young mother. Patrice Fagnant MacArthur is a remarkable young mother. And perhaps the most remarkable thing about her is her humility. When she became interested in quilting and wanted to make a special quilt for her foster daughter, she looked for some saint patterns. When she could not find them, well, she just decided to make them herself. So I downloaded some free quilt uh, creation software so I could design the blocks and I did research on the symbols behind the saints and I set out to do this project. She says she will design a saint block for anyone who asks and enjoys her Saturday night sewing sessions where she makes the quilts by hand. 
In addition to caring for her foster daughter, she also homeschools her young sons, David, 13, and Isaac, 11. We turn to homeschooling as a way to provide them um, with a better education for them. And it's really been wonderful to watch them grow and learn. And I get to learn new things too. I've always enjoyed learning. Patrice attended the former St. George School in Chicopee and is a 1992 graduate of Hoyle Catholic High School. She holds a bachelor's degree in art and history from Our Lady of the Elms College and earned a master's degree in applied theology from there as well. She has used that education for quilting and for many other projects. She began her own website and blogs and reviews about Catholic matters, especially books. Her works can be found at spiritualwomanthoughts.blogspot.com. It's really uh, both a creative outlet and a, a, a ministry in a small way. And it started to really focus on women's spirituality, especially for busy moms. Uh, we don't always have the time to focus on our spiritual life. So it was really the focus to share uh, spiritual reading. Patrice says that one important factor for her as a mother is prayer every day. Lots of prayer. <laughs> I always start the day with prayer. You know, sometimes I'm doing it in between getting the kids breakfast in the morning or whatever, but you know, definitely need to get that prayer in the morning um, and then praying with the children at night. Um, you know, without that foundation in God, life would be much more challenging. When Patrice was a little girl, her school librarian told her that maybe she was taking out too many books about the saints. But little did that woman know that the saints would become the focus for Patrice's work, her quilting, and her life. In fact, Patrice's fascination with the saints was a perfect match for her when she was asked to write the Catholic Baby Name book. The Catholic Baby Name book features over 10,000 uh, saint and biblically related names. Um, so for people who are looking for a faith-based name for their child, there are lots of wonderful names to choose from. And it includes uh, short biographies of saints and the history of where names come from, their meaning. In addition to writing a book and designing a saint quilt and homeschooling, Patrice volunteers at Holy Name Parish in Springfield. She maintains the parish website and Facebook page. She also takes care of the parish library, and she is the parish contact for the Child Advocacy Program. She praises her parents for instilling a deep and dear sense of faith, and she says the homeschooling community has been a blessing. When asked about advice she would give other mothers, Patrice breaks into her frequent smile. <laughs> I try not to. <laughs> Every child's different, you know, and every, you know, mother needs to figure out her own child. She encourages mothers to be good to each other and recognize that all of them are trying to do what's best for their child. The battles that mothers get into, whether it's, you know, breast versus bottle feeding when they're little, or homeschooling versus public or private education, or working at home, or um, working outside the home. Oh my goodness, we can be so cruel to each other sometimes. And it's important to realize every mother's just trying to do her best, and every child's different, and every situation's different. She said that God is with each mother on her journey, and that one should place their trust in the Lord. And she stressed again the importance of prayer. Definitely to have that foundation in prayer and to make it an example of how you live your life. I think children pick up so much more from how you live as opposed to what you say. And just keep at it. It's every day. It's a journey. <laughs> the journey of motherhood is something that Patrice clearly loves. It is a saintly calling with many moments of grace along the way. For Real to Real, I'm Peggy Weber. What a wonderfully inspiring woman who does so much for her family. And thanks for joining us this week. Next week, we will be back with another Best Of edition. So please join me right back here at this same time next week for Real to Real, your window on the world around you. Have a good week. Real to Real is a production of the Catholic Communications Corporation, funded in part by the annual Catholic Appeal and the support of you our faithful viewers.